And I know that uh-huh. that term is used in a lot of different ways, uh, but I think it's just all of the different parts of the American experience going back, you know, mostly music-wise to the 20s, further than that, but like a lot of the stuff that was starting to be recorded in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, I love old blues, I love old country, I love old gospel. I love all the elements that made up, you know, a rock and roll. And uh, I collect, uh, I collect, rec- I collect 45. So um, I have, all, you know, old doo-wop, old, all kinds of old rhythm and blues, old, I love murder ballads, you know, it's like, so I have like a, a very eclectic uh interest in American music and so for this record uh, I really wanted to to uh, bring a lot of the different tones from the different times that I were my favorite tones and put them together uh, the way I wanted to put them together it's almost like uh, putting together rock and roll in a different way with the same ingredients you know <laughs> for me <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And who were some of your favorite musicians growing up? Like I said, I remember when we talked last time, you mentioned the fact that you had some very eclectic taste and some very eclectic taste in the music that you were listening to. It seems to me that you were listening to everything from some of the uh, more current rockers to some of the, uh, definitely some of the historical blues artists. So who were some of the musicians that got you involved in? What actually got you on this path of being a musician? Hmm. Um, I think the the path that got me involved in being a musician was when I moved to LA in 88. Uh, there was like a kind of a revival in LA of uh, just roots music. There's all kinds of stuff going on. There was the blues, the paladins were coming through all the time. There was a real strong just blues scene in LA at that time. Probably, I think there still is now, but it, it was really big then. Uh, there was a bunch of bands doing rockabilly for the first time, you know, since, the, you know, it was, it was different back then. Uh, there was uh, jump, there was a lot of jump blues going on. Uh, they were calling it swing music, but it was always jump blues. And uh, just, just a bunch of, you know, that just made you start looking back to, you know, older artists. Uh, and learning right. from them. I mean, I grew up listening to, you know, just kind of alt music, but I think at some point you you look back and you see everything. Everything's there. Everything that you've ever listened to came from, you know, I don't know, T-Bone Walker or, or like, I don't know, Hank Williams or uh, somebody, somebody back there started it, and it just all kind of snowballed and made all the things today. Now, one of the songs, that I've, and one of the one of the songs that you did, and I've got to teach you about this because um, I know that you're involved in a very uh, successful and wonderful relationship and everything. But you did this song called uh, "Pine Me," and I know that when I've read other reviews and other conversations that you talk about, you talked about how that's somewhat connected to the Me Too movement and the fact that, uh, as you said, it, as you put it, I think in one of your interviews with somebody that uh, you knew a lot of women that wanted to write a murder ballad for a long time, but. You just figured that this time was the right time to write this kind of ballad because of what was going on. So if you want to explain that a little bit more to us. Well, I don't really like to use the term Me Too movement because I just feel like there's so much attached to that. Like, I I guess what I'm using now is like third wave feminism, you know, or, or just like it's not even that. It's just everyone is just more woken up to how all of us have been, a lot of us, most of us have been poorly treated in different ways, right? And I think a lot of women and all the things that we've put up with myself through my life, just like let boys be boys, you know, uh, kind of thing. We're all just like over it. (laughs) We're all like, all of us women, we got about like, we're ready to have like 20,000 bees come flying out of our mouths. That's kind of what we're feeling. (laughs) But we're, we're trying to be cool. We're trying to be cool about it but no murder ballads have been around you know they go way back in, in a lots of different um american art forms and it's typically uh, the man gets mad at the woman and he kills her and he usually leaves her by the river or something like that so uh it's, it's in all you know it's in countries and blues it's in, it's in a lot of different places so it's it's there it's an interesting type of song and i wanted to write something like it but so this was kind of like 
the song starts out where he's killed the woman and she's by the river and then she haunts him to come get her body, take her body to her family's house, do the right thing. And then she keeps haunting him because, you know, if you see that there's a music video for it, it's on, it's on uh, YouTube, find me, my Kim lens. And this guy in uh, Austria made this, uh, uh, animated video that's like, he uses four kinds of animation and it's pretty cool in the end like there's the bear in the uh, forest like kills the guy it's pretty cool <laughs> so so the so the bear takes him out the woman doesn't even have to take him out the animal does the, the animal does it for her. you know mother nature baby mother nature <laughs> <laughs> mother nature She's never plays that's anyway. very He's already dead. And so the guy that was making this video, super cool guy. He's like, so we talked about what we wanted to do for the video. And he made it so at the end of the video, the guy went crazy. And I was like, no, 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 the guy needs to die. And he's like, well, why does he need to die? I'm like, what do you mean? The the woman's already dead. Like, like, (laughs) it's a story. I'm not talking about real life. It's a, it's a, it's a song. He killed it. Anyway, so how did you hook, I, how did you I hook up really with? I really want to kill somebody, you know, in real life. <laughs> That's what you say now, but I'm sure that your significant other probably thinks that sometimes that you're out to get him. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but maybe you're probably right. <laughs> so how did you hook up with this uh, Vienna-based artist? Because I'm always fascinated by the fact that oftentimes we have these artists that will connect with each other that are in way opposite parts of the world. So how did he find you or you find him? Oh, um, I met him through the person that does my Americana radio. And uh, she, he had done uh, something, another film for one of her other clients. So it's just, you know, that's what, you know, the internet and uh, social media, I know sometimes for me, I'm just so fed up with it. Right. Aren't we all? Um <laughs> Podcasts are fun still, <laughs> right. but uh, all, but the good part of it is that it is really easy easy to connect with people all over the world that have shared interests. And uh, he was just so fun to work with. He doesn't speak a bit of English, but we uh, we would have these late night WhatsApp talks where we would go back and forth, and he would send me, you know, like the next twenty second installment of the video. You really should check out the video. It's very cool. Yeah, I'm definitely planning to check out the video. It sounds like it's a fascinating video. It definitely sounds like it's going to be worth uh, looking at and seeing. And we'll direct our uh, folks that they can catch Find Me. I'm actually looking at the clip of it right now on YouTube. So if you look up YouTube and look up Kim Lenz, that's L-E-N-Z, and Pine Me, you can find that video. So, uh, Dean, you have to find that, and we'll have to put that on our page so they can see it because it's definitely got some very uh, gothic kind of images of this woman. looks like she's... Must be the ghost part of the woman because she's between some what well, looks like some very ghostly <laughs> trees and like in like a swamp area. <laughs> and yeah, you said the yeah. name of it is what? Now what's the name of the song? Pine, Pine. like you're going, like you're pining for somebody. Me and her name is Kim K I M L E N Z. So like lens, like the eyeglass, but with a Z instead of the S. Okay, pine me two words. I thought it was one word. That's why. All right, we get it <laughs> yeah. up there. And All even right. like the yes. meaning of the word of the phrase "pine me," I mean, "pine me" is like you know, remember, you know, like pining for someone, remember me. Um, also, you know, the forest, and and also like one, "pine me," and that one of the other meanings is he left her by the forest, you know, like a pine box that you put someone in when you bury them. I mean, there's like a lot of layers on this song about all kinds of different things, but but mostly like, you know. I think uh, I wanted to pay homage to murder ballad, um, but also I think just women, you know, we need to be taken care of, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even to Definitely. the point of if you're gonna kill us, at least do the you know like <laughs> do the right thing <laughs> afterwards. I don't know. I'm that, I, it's kind of dark humor. I get that it's dark humor, okay, but. Uh, no, no. Oh. I'm actually a big fan of dark humor, but um, I've actually had this conversation with a friend of mine because um, 
you know, I'm not trying to rush. I'm actually rooting for 200. I'm in the mid 50s. Don't know that I'll make it to 200. Nobody has yet, except for maybe mm-hmm. some of those biblical char- some of those biblical characters that we were talking about earlier. And it might help yeah. if I actually did as we were talking about earlier some more health things to make myself even come close to the 200. But I'm rooting for 200. But you know, at the end of whatever the journey is, there will probably be you know, what you just talked about, the box and everything for myself as well. But I've got a friend that has made it very clear that she wants to go the other way. She wants to like, you know, have ashes spread all over the place and everything. But, and I get it. You're gone and your body doesn't feel it, but I'm sorry. Um, I think I'd rather go the freezing route versus having fire licking all over my body. Even if the body is, can't feel it. Uh, I don't know how the rest, I don't know how the rest of y'all feel, but I'm not really feeling that whole concept of, Fire. I mean, I know the other way you're going to get worms and can have other things eating at you, but there's just a, there's just something about fire that I'm not really feeling. I, I don't know. Like, I think that at some point, probably in the next 20, 30 years, they're going to be able to take your DNA and grow you a new liver and a couple of new kidneys, and that'll give you an extra 100 years. So, <laughs> I'm liking your so thoughts. You don't even have to think about this, you know? <laughs> Hey, hey, Dean, you've got Chrome, so they're, they're going to just get rid of that totally. What do you think of this, Dean? <laughs> I said, are you liking her idea? It might work. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, clean out the filtration system. We're all set. We're set. We're set. That's right. Just keep it going for a while and a while. Now, one of the other things that we talked about when uh, you called on uh, the station over there at COM, and I just we, I wanted you to elaborate on that more because we couldn't elaborate on it as much because it was a shorter interview. But uh, you, we talked about the fact that, and you've alluded to it even a little bit in this conversation, about the way women are treated in the music business. So if you'll share us a little bit of your thoughts about the way you felt you've been treated and the way it is, is even now. Because if I remember correctly, I want to say that you kind of like started your own production and everything because you were tired of the way that some of us main folks were treating you in the sense of putting you out there in terms of being a, a success. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I just think it's, we have all kinds of social constructs and one of them is the patriarchy. There's obviously constructs against people of, uh, different, uh, ethnic backgrounds, mixed race. you know, there's like all kinds of constructs. So we have to break them all down. Right. Well, the the one construct that's easy for me to think about is this construct of women not being taken seriously as artists. You know, it's like, really, if you think about it, even when you're thinking about, uh, you could be thinking about Ola Fitzgerald or, I don't know, Patsy Cline or whoever, like these great singers, you really think of them as singers, as beautiful women and as singers. And, uh, they didn't really write most of the music that they, or any of the music they played. They they weren't in the, they didn't engineer any of the music that they were playing. They didn't mix the music. They didn't probably choose the artwork. They did like it, like they're almost like women have basically just been used uh, for their maybe their voices sometimes. But then also maybe you don't even really hear the woman's voice because it goes through all these filters. Uh, and it's just the fact that men have done traditionally done all these jobs, you know, women, there's a, there's a couple women traditionally, uh, that have done some recording, some, some high end recording, but not that much and not that many players. I mean, yeah, you can pull out all oh, this person and that person, but it's very few. So I think that for me, I don't think it's, you know, should be all women or all men. I just feel like for the, for the art form of music, I think that if we have it more balanced, where we have men and women doing all aspects, uh, it, it, we're just going to get a more clear picture of the human experience, which is what art is all about, right? Definitely. And one of the other things that I remember from uh, our last conversation and everything is that you play an instrument that may not be a stereotypical instrument for a lady and then you come in there and you're not exactly swimming as you recall as you reminded me you're not exactly the tallest person in the world so Mm -hmm. i was just wondering if you could share with us kind of the reactions you've got when you come into this club because you told me some of those stories as well where you're coming to this club as a a certain height and everything and you're bringing this instrument that folks are probably uh, there there might have even been some people in the audience that might have been a little bit um condescending or maybe even a little bit uh 
wrong with their attitude. So I just wanted to know if you could share a little bit about your reaction when you've gone into these places, because like I said, I described a little bit about you know, what that image is, but maybe you could paint an even better picture. I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I think you might have me confused with somebody else. I I play guitar. I play a lot That's of right. instruments, but live I play guitar. Yeah, so of course, you know, nobody thinks a woman can play guitar. 